Ladies and gentlemen, we remain standing as we sing the Zambia National Anthem.
a privilege to welcome each and every one of you to the 13th Annual Conference of the Pan-African Lawyers Union, the opening ceremony right here in our friendly tourist city of Livingston in Zambia. We appreciate each and every one of you for taking your time, for making it out here to the tourist capital, and you've come from afar, of course, and we welcome you to our beautiful and friendly land of Zambia. And for that, ladies and gentlemen, you all deserve a big round of applause for yourselves. At this point, my task is very, very simple. I'm going to call upon the Battle Chief Executive Officer, Advocate Donald Dare, who's going to lead us into the introduction and housekeeping announcements for this afternoon. Mr. Dare, please, thank you.
for better days ahead, economically and otherwise. So we are happy, guest of honor, through you to convey our heartfelt congratulations to the government of the Republic of Zambia for this master.
economic and regional integration. Lawyers play a critical role in helping societies and different societies in Africa to be much more united. A colleague was speaking this morning that it takes about 30 hours to travel from Algeria or the Tunisia to come to Lusaka. It takes less time to travel from Lusaka to London. Strictly speaking, it means Africa is disjointed. We can't develop as a continent if we do not find solutions as lawyers to these problems. There are so many currencies in Africa that it's difficult to trade as one. What are we as lawyers doing to help this? It is our problem and we must identify ourselves fully with this problem by finding solutions. It's a challenge. And debt crisis is also another challenge. How can we assist our politicians to better the lives of citizens? Today is not a day for speeches, and I'm not a man to speak. <laughs> I'm not a politician, by the way. You don't believe me.
one year old away from India, um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today marks a high point of reflection in the developmental trajectory of the African continent. I am related to the part of the community of lawyers that can see it fit under the auspices of the Pan-African Lawyers Union to calibrate our progress and introspect on matters that are pertinent to peace, security, and prosperity of our people. Coming from the Southern African region, I represent the Sadat Lawyers Association, which is the umbrella body of the 16 member bar association of the Sadat region. I am from Zimbabwe. Our mission is to promote and protect human rights and rule of law without fear or favor. On the occasion of the 2023 uh, 20, Panu Biennial Conference, I am pleased to welcome all lawyers and partners to Southern Africa. In the recent past, there has been talk of reduction in the democratic and civil space. Why many, why many view it as an abstract to the legal profession in Southern Africa? This has become an aspect with direct impact on the livelihoods and existence of lawyers. It has been deeply felt in the loss of life and liberty of lawyers and the acute escalation of the risk of being a lawyer and the human rights defender. Um, my speech was written with excellence and fellow colleagues. It will be our last wish for lawyers to work in fear of doing their work because this represents the utmost levels of vulnerability uh, for ordinary citizens that rely on lawyers to protect their human rights. The theme of this conference is a call to evaluate Africa we want in the heritage we seek to live future generations. We obviously do not want to leave future generations with the debts that we have. Defining the role of the legal profession is in addressing the sovereign debt crisis starts with the respect for life and the human rights of African citizens. It is our scope of work to have um, to have you, madam, and to host Africa's leading legal minds in this time as we set out to locate the legal perfection in the development agenda of our continent, our respective regions, and our beloved countries. Within the SADC region, we have chosen to identify critical areas in which we seek the direct support and cooperation with governments. First, the constitution of a response platform to the growing threat of climate change and warning environmental sustainability. I congratulate members of uh, the profession for establishing the regional working group on climate change and sustainability. The working group is chaired by last, by the last president, Mr. Zulu. It aims to promote the role of the legal profession in advancing climate change, readiness, adaptation, and preparedness with special focus on policy alignment and implementation to foster global climate justice in relation to the developing world in Africa. Secondly, I applaud the contributions of the legal profession in the way of constitution, uh, constituting a regional seat for international commercial administration. I would like to in particular Zambia and Malawi for taking the lead in setting up the first centers of excellence for international commercial arbitration under this initiative. The need to stem loss of capital and outflows of funds from <coughs> external awards in international commercial arbitration and investment dispute resolution is also key to controlling the, uh, the spiral of sovereign debt in Africa. This becomes more apparent if we note that in the past 10 years, more than 40 billion has been lost to external awards in international commercial arbitration and investment dispute resolution. Yet the total sovereign uh, debt of Africa to China as of 2021 set at 63.23 billion. If we offset that, we can see how much we this, this just gives us an example of how playing our role as the legal profession can contribute to the outcomes of development. I'm happy to say that I've been briefed 
speciality of the judiciary. This can only happen if we promote strong independence of bar associations, and this is our very own goal to, uh, to arms for collaboration. We continue to participate fairly in standard is inside that in continental levels in efforts to promote gender equality, economic empowerment of women for realization of more inclusive decision making and fair democratic processes to facilitate cross border mobility of legal services through mutual legal agreements to constitute infra infrastructures for peace through mediation, negotiation, and any warning systems for conflict and to ensure technical legal capacity and expertise in the monitoring of the elections. We set out this year to enhance the role of the legal profession in regional economic integration and participation in the Africa continental free trade area as we roll out the regional chapter conference in the Angolan capital of Rwanda in September later in the year. As I move to conclude, let me also invite all of you to this annual general meeting and conference of the Santa Players Association. It will also be our inaugural, we will also be launching our inaugural business mission uh, exhibition for law, trade, and commerce, which will be held at the same conference and general meeting to be part of the agenda. It is against this background that I am excited to welcome you to Southern Africa and to be part of the contingent that goes through in this part of our beautiful continent. By the way, after Zambia and Zimbabwe, and as I speak, I think a person in Zimbabwe can hear me because it's just 15 minutes walk and in Zimbabwe. <laughs>
a statement and then we'll proceed after that to call on, on our guest tomorrow for this afternoon. A big round of applause for you. Now, 
thank you for all your efforts which have enabled us to work serenely here today. An African Lawyers Union has several objectives, including working for Africans' economic and social development and promoting good governance in our continent. For some years, we have carried out several activities in this realm, including the relentless black fight against illicit financial flows from Africa and numerous activities linked to our participation in the Stop the Building Consortium. This year, we have chosen to place the issue, the issue of the sovereign debt of African states at the heart of our annual conference to analyze its controls, reflect on the impact of debt on the economic and social development of our continent, and identify the contribution of the legal institution to better management of the debt crisis and above all, on possible reforms with a view to a future balance framework for debt negotiations. Madam, the Minister, Treasurer, Invited Honor, c'est un secret pour personne. C'est un secret pour personne. La dette pèse lourd dans les budgets nationaux de nos États. La dette pèse lourd dans les budgets nationaux de nos États. Dans beaucoup de pays africains, le service de la dette représente une part importante de revenus. Jusqu'à plus de 25% de leurs revenus pour certains pays, disent les experts. Ces pays dépenseront plus dans le remboursement de la dette qu'ils ne se consacrent aux services essentiels pour leur population comme la santé, l'éducation, l'eau potable et l'électricité. La pandémie de la COVID-19 a exacerbé le phénomène de l'endettement de notre continent, avec une diversification des créanciers de nos États qui se retrouvent être de plus en plus des prêteurs privés à travers le mécanisme d'émission de zéro bonds et des prêts qui sont de plus en plus adossés sur nos ressources minières qui en garantissent leur remboursement. Le problème est donc réel et il est d'une actualité percutante. Et la solution, hélas, est loin d'être trouvée. Le programme d'ajustement structurel, l'initiative pays pauvres très endettés des institutions de prêt en bourse des années 90 et 2000, l'initiative d'allègement de la dette multilatérale, les pays du G8 de 2005, l'initiative de suspension du service de la dette des pays le plus pauvre du club de Paris et du cadre commun du G20 d'avril 2022, sont autant d'initiatives imaginées pour apporter une solution au problème de la dette. À ce jour, malheureusement, aucune de ces initiatives n'a véritablement été salvatrice pour notre continent. Lorsqu'au risque du surendettement, on ajoute les menaces réelles que font peser le fond retour sur l'équilibre de nos finances publiques, il nous paraît important de marquer un temps d'arrêt pour réfléchir profondément et de proposer des solutions purement africaines à cette situation. Ce soir, nous avons le privilège d'entendre sur cette question des dettes souveraines des pays africains, une voix autorisée, Madame le Ministre, qui prendra la parole au nom du Président de la République de Zambie pour nous dire, pour nous édifier, que nous sommes encore davantage heureux que ce soit la Zambie qui nous parle, parce que tout à l'heure, le Président de la l'eau Association de Zambia vient de nous dire que la Zambia, elle, elle a trouvé une solution à ce problème. Eh bien, nous sommes tout de suite à l'écoute de la Zambie pour nous donner son secret. Le programme scientifique qui va se poursuivre durant les trois prochains jours donnera également l'occasion à divers experts de disséquer la thématique. Je suis persuadé que nous répartirons des ministres suffisamment avertis et outillés pour conseiller nos États et nos dirigeants à mieux appréhender la question. Il est clair que la profession juridique du continent a un rôle important à jouer dans l'assistance et le conseil à apporter au gouvernement pour une meilleure négociation ou renégociation de la dette. Nous ne devons pas perdre de vue que nous sommes une force de proposition et des vigiles de la bonne gouvernance de nos États. 
étape au cours le plus bas et avec un niveau de risque assez prudent. Il faudra notamment fournir une assistance en matière d'élaboration des contrats et des accords de prêt, de façon à faciliter les futures opérations de restructuration de la dette, renforcer la capacité de nos pays à s'engager vis-à-vis de leurs créanciers et éviter ou minimiser les litiges. De son côté, l'Union panafricaine des avocats, qui est liée à l'Union africaine par un mémorandum au profond des et qui participe activement aux travaux de l'architecture de la gouvernance en Afrique, doit pouvoir se positionner pour assister l'organisation continentale dans les stratégies juridiques ivoiriennes. Il faut d'ailleurs souligner que l'Union africaine vient de lancer un observatoire de la tête de ses États membres. Ceci afin de disposer d'une base de données en temps réel sur l'endettement des États africains et pouvoir mettre en place des systèmes d'alerte précoce. Nous ne voyons pas la face. La corrélation entre la mal gouvernance et la crise de la dette est incontestable. En tant que vigile des sociétés, nous, avocats, devons aussi inciter la mise en place de politiques transparentes de gestion des fonds publics dans nos États. Dénoncer systématiquement toutes les pratiques de corruption, de détournement et de conflits d'intérêts très souvent observés et qui contribuent à asphyxier davantage nos économies. Je voudrais terminer mon propos en saluant et remerciant tous nos partenaires financiers qui sont dans cette salle pour l'accompagnement de nos activités quotidiennes. Sur ce, je vous remercie de votre attention et je prie, Monsieur le Président de la de la Association of Zambia, de noter qu'on n'apprend pas au singe à faire de la grimace. Vous n'avez pas besoin d'inviter les avocats à aller découvrir les points cachés de la famille. Une fois qu'ils seront là, je vous assure, ils le feront sans même se signaler. <rire> Ceci étant, avec votre permission, je veux introduire et prier notre invité d'honneur, Madame l'honorable ministre du Travail et de la Sécurité sociale, Madame Brenda Wika Tabatanga, représentant son Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République de Zambie, à prendre la parole ici pour nous délivrer le keynote speech. Madame la ministre, vous avez le mot.
The President of the Pan-African Lawyers Union, Mr. Kari Abdu Bagwe, the Special Endowment Member of PALU, Hon. Prince Adetokubo Kayode. <laughs> the United Nations Independent Expert on Foreign Debt, other international financial obligations and human rights, Professor Atia Waris, the Director of Research Institute on Race, Power and Political Economy, Dr. Grieve Kellogg. Should I just say, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure and honor that I stand before you today on behalf of the President of the Republic of Zambia, as we gather here in the beautiful city of Livingstone for the 13th annual conference organized by PALU in collaboration with the Law Association of Zambia. This conference holds tremendous importance as we delve into the critical theme of the sovereign debt crisis in Africa, the role of the legal profession. Livingstone, with its breathtaking scenery and rich heritage, serves a perfect backdrop for this momentous occasion, shared back to back Zambia and Zimbabwe. <laughs> and uh, I believe you follow the rest of the world. that not only activates with its natural wonders, but also represents the gateway to Zambia's great adventures and tourism attractions, most notably the awe-inspiring mighty Victoria Falls, which my, um, my sister spoke about earlier on. I extend my warmest welcome to all participants who have traveled from far and wide to be part of this momentous occasion. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am humbled to be given the opportunity to officially open this conference and I would like to commend PALU and the Law Association of Zambia for the dedication and hard work in bringing together this esteemed gathering. The presence of leaders, of leading lawyers, public officials, legal experts, trade experts, policy experts, and other stakeholders here today demonstrates the importance of addressing the sovereign debt crisis in Africa and the vital role that the legal profession plays in finding sustainable solutions. The issue of sovereign debt in Africa is Pressing a pressing concern that demands our urgent attention. Many African nations are facing significant challenges in managing the debt burdens, which not only affect their economies, but also have profound implications for social development and the well-being of our people. It is therefore imperative that we as a legal, a legal professionals, we as legal professionals, come together to explore ways in which we can contribute to mitigating this crisis and fostering economic sustainability in our respective countries. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, over the next three days, over the next three days, this conference will serve as a platform for engaging discussions, uh, strategic consultations, and the exchange of knowledge and expertise, and knowledge and expertise, it, is, it offers a unique opportunity, therefore, for participants to broaden the networks, create and renew professional con contacts, and deepen their understanding of the complex legal and policy frameworks surrounding the matter on sovereign debt crisis. I encourage you all. I encourage all of you to actively participate in the various sessions, engage in thought-provoking, in thought-provoking debates, and share your experiences and insights about this topic. 
by fostering dialogue, collaboration, we can collectively work towards developing innovative approaches and best practices that will strengthen our legal systems and institutions to enhance transparency and accountability and contribute to the sustainable economic development of our beloved continent. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I express my sincere gratitude to Palu, the Law Association of Zambia, and all the organizers for the hard work in bringing us together for the important conference. I am confident that the next few days will be marked by fruitful discussions, meaningful interactions, and the foregoing, uh, the forging of uh, lasting partnerships. It is now my honor and privilege to declare the 13th annual conference officially open and I wish you all successful and productive deliberations. Thank you very much.